Well, here we are standing at the same end of the Wembley pitch where the fourth goal went in for England in 1966. With me, the man who scored it and indeed got a hat trick, Jeff Hurst. Now, are those memories as vivid now as they were then? Well, they are because people who were at the game and every, every part of the world remember where they were, what they were doing during that uh, lovely two hours 30 years ago. And it, it's hard to get away from it. Which of those three goals gave you the most pleasure? Well, everybody talks about the disputed goal and everybody clearly remembers the final goal. But uh, in, in many respects, the first goal was an important goal for the team at the time. We were losing one nothing. We needed to get back in the game quite quickly. And I guess it was also the working with Bobby at the club level, where we, we knew about taking these quick free kicks into space and scoring a goal like that with your club mate, I think was, was quite fulfilling. And, and from a professional point of view, probably the best of the three. Everybody from uh, those who were here to scientists in uh, this current year have been trying to prove whether that ball went over the line or not. I've got a little theory about it, you know, Jeff, because 20 years later in the World Cup of 1986, there was a very similar incident by a Spanish player against Brazil. Awesome. And in, by then, we had a camera behind the goal. It was quite clear that the ball can hit the bar, go, go down over the line and shoot straight out again. That's right. It's, uh, I, was at, I was out in Mexico and I remember the incident very clearly. And the ball was, in fact, when they saw that camera from the camera view, about a yard over the line. And they disallowed. But some go in and some, some don't. I was going some to count and some don't. <laughs> yes, the referee didn't count that one in 86. No, at least he, he counted yeah. yours. Yes, yes, but it's important that it counted at the right time. One of the biggest newspaper stories in the build-up to Euro 96 has been what happened to the ball from 66, which you uh, thumped into this net here at the end of the final. How on earth did it finish up in the possession of a German player? Well, it was quite clear what happened after the game, how it picked the ball up, and then if you look at the film and some of the photographs, he had the ball under his arm when he received his medal from the Queen. Straight up about seven years ago, uh, there was a German game here, and there was a press conference held by a German magazine, and Helmut and I were invited to give our different views. And uh, the question came out from one of the journalists, Where's the ball? And I said, he's got it on the top table. And I said, it's a tradition, tradition in this country, if you score a hat-trick in any game, you keep the ball. And uh, Held mumbled back in German through an interpreter. He said, jokingly, that uh, if you score the first goal in the World Cup final, you keep the ball. <laughs> that was his excuse. Now, here we are in 96. What would you say to the England players before this European Championship about the pressures of being the host nation, the expectancy? I mean, how do you think the England players might react to that this year? Well, I think much the same as we did. You're very much aware that you are expected to do well in your home country, you know, playing at Wembley. I wouldn't say it's any more or less than it was then. I mean, the media glare, the focus is far more severe than it's ever been, going back 30 years. So there's a great expectancy from the country as a whole. But all they can go out and they're representing the country, they're playing at home, but on a great pitch, they've just got to do the best they can. Now, what about the prospects then, Jeff, for Euro 96? Uh, realistically, um, obviously patriotically, you want England to do well. How, how do you think we're going to fare? Well, I, uh, I guess realistically, you've got to say the semi-final will be what we're looking at. And I think anything beyond that will be very pleased. Anything less than that, I think we'll be very extremely disappointed. I think the first group uh, is a bit difficult, particularly with the Scotland game. I see if they get through the teams are playing in the other group, whether they'll play the next round, they're quite capable on a day of beating any of those. And then you get to, it's just a one-off after that, and who knows what can happen after that. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't mind if England won and somebody scored a hat-trick in the final, Jeff. Well, selfishly, I wouldn't mind. I'd love us to, to win the competition. I think it's very important. And I would like two players to score two each. Well, always nice to talk to a 1966 World Cup hero, Jeff, especially at Wembley. But that was 1966. We're now looking ahead to 1996, the European Championship almost upon us. Make sure you enjoy it with us here on BBC Television. And 30 years on, England's sporting triumph is captured in this BBC video, available now.